peace. Let us run quickly. It's a rush because our time is running over. Let us read in Malachi the, the title, the topic of today is Recovery from Financial Curses. Recover from financial curses. You see, sometimes the lack of uh, uh, finance can sometimes due to curse. When someone is under punishment, under God's curse, sometimes he can work so much, work as he can, but at uh, and uh, made an effort to achieve more. Unfortunately, he gets uh, few. Though we can also diagnose some curse in finance. Let us read Malachi. Malachi chapter 3 verse uh, 7 up to 12. Let us read. Malachi 7 12. Ever since the time of your ancestors, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. Return to me. I will return to you, say the Lord Almighty. But you ask, how are we to return? Will a mere mother rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how are we robbing you? The Bible says in tithes and offerings. You are under recurse. You are under a curse not under the curse but under a curse which kind of curse remember here it's not when they say under a curse is totally different with under the curse you are under a curse your whole nation because you are robbing me bring the whole tithe into where the store house that there may be food in my house test me in this test me try me test me in this say the lord almighty and see if i will not throw throw open the flood gets open the flood gets of heaven and they pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to do what to store it if you do so verse 11 i will do what i will prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vine in your fields will not drop their fruit before it's ripe says the Lord Almighty then all then all the nations we call you blessed for yours we be a delightful land says the almighty God. Amen. What is a tithe? The tithe definition comes from Hebrew ma'aser. Ma'aser is the word Hebrew. Ma'aser which means tithe. Ma'aser is in Hebrew. Ma'aser is tithe. There is a word, eser. Eser, aser in Hebrew is ten. One, two, three, four, ten is eser. Ma'aser means tithe. One tenth. So, tithe, God has a big problem with people because they don't tithe. So, tithing in the Bible 
refers to giving 10% of your income, earnings, production, or possessions. When we talk about tithing, people always confuse the word tithing with generosity. People will say, yes, all my earnings, my incomes, I send to the poor people. I have many widows. I support many widows. I support children, orphans. You will hear these frequent questions every time. You say, no, I give generously to poor people. So I don't understand why should I tithe. So people tend to confuse tithe and om. Om, a l m. Om means to give poor people to assist people who have luck. This is totally different. When the angel came to see Cornelius, he said, Cornelius, when you were praying, your prayer were hard. Even your arm, your arm, om, a l m. You are gift of generosity to poor the bible make clear distinction between tithe and others things other people will say yes i give offerings offering it's a will it's a wish money you give you can give or you cannot give you can give a small or few or great quantity of what you have when we say offering you are offering you are giving it's not an obligation so don't confuse tithe and offering offering just you offer i can say oh if i offer you a job i offer you my shoes i offer you my money this just comes from my wish my wishes is to give you something so this is also different from the tithe Another thing people will say, oh, tithe is only for Old Testament, not for New Testament. This also is confusion. It's confusion. The Bible is an entire book with 66 books. You cannot make a difference between your body you are soul and your spirit you are one when something missed in you when you don't have the body we say you are dead you become spirit and when you don't have uh, the spirit in you you cannot breathe so the whole bible the entire bible is the same you hear some people say that this was the laws of Moses, but they are mistaken. The tithe came before the law of Moses. I will show you. Before Moses, before God told to Moses to do that, it's because the Israelis have forgotten the principle of tithing. Then in the commandment, in the laws, in the decrees, God told to Moses, tell the Israel to give their tithe. I give now command. Why? Because this was a good principle. This was a good custom from the patriarchs, Abraham, Jacob, and so on. So his descendants forgot this principle. Then God reminded them and he did a decree for them to give a tithe. Are you with me? Praise the Lord. So I, other people will say that when Jesus died, he died and he removed all the laws. We are, we are under grace. We are not under law. That also is a confusion. Jesus did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. According to the Bible, I came to accomplish, to fulfill the law, not to abolish the law. Even in the grace, the law is there. If I give you something in the grace, grace means I give you my phone. That's free. But I will expect from you the word thank you. 
if you don't say thank you you will hurt me and say oh i realized that my phone is not welcomed but if i give you my phone you say oh thank you i will be satisfied even in the grace there is some laws there is some thing to do i can say oh paul i will give this house if you do this there is also some condition under the grace don't confuse grace and law even in the grace there is law let us say jesus came to die for everyone but it's condition to believe in jesus even if there is a grace you need to do what there is a law of acceptance the law of agreeing you say oh jesus i receive you when we say jesus i receive you it's a law it's a law you are binding with the law you need to agree to accept it, even if it's a grace it's not uh, i can give you something freely but there is a condition on those things so people who say that this is for old testament jesus is not interested with the tenth it's not true jesus spoke actually this, jesus praised the pharisees every time jesus criticized pharisees but when it was on tithe jesus said you do well because you give the tithe even on small things he was praising them because they honor they understand the value of tithing praise the lord so don't be confused about the terminology free gift offerings fast fruit fast fruit is uh, the, the the whole the whole salary when you you, you start your first job that money belong to god not to you that's first fruit the bible said that honor god with your first fruit offering in the first fruit in proverbs so tithing in the bible speaks about giving your income earning production or possession we see abraham the father of faith giving tithe he gave tithe in genesis chapter 17 chapter 14 verse 17 20 the bible say after abraham returned from defeating kedolaimon and the kings allied with him the king of sodom came out to meet him in the valley of shaveh that is king's valley then melech king of salem brought out the bread and the wine he was priest of god most high and he blessed abraham saying blessed be abraham by god most high creator of heaven and earth and praise be to god most high who delivered your enemies into your hand then abraham did what can you read it with me then abraham gave him a tenth of everything abraham listen here when abraham returned from battle he met Melech Sedech. During this encounter, Melech Sedech told Abraham that his victory was not his, was God's victory. Because Abraham went with uh, 300 young men to fight against these foreigner kings who took captive his nephew Lot and uh, his family. Then Abraham went to battle then he brought back a lot and they have many many spoils plunders he came with many many plunder then melech sedek came this place was jerusalem in the valley of uh, the valley of kidron they call it the king's valley or shaver the king's valley kidron abraham met melech sedek melech sedek was in the form of a man but he was jesus he did it recognize him but when he told him about his name melech 
which means king. Sadek means righteousness. The king of righteousness. And the king of peace, Salem. That, 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 that terminology told about Jesus. Jesus is our Tzedekim. Our, 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 our righteousness. He's the prince of peace. So then Melech Sedek gave Abraham bread and wine. This means the Holy Communion. He gave Abraham a Holy Communion. This was substitute types of Jesus who will come to be sacrificed. His body will become bread, even his blood, the wine. So he gave Abraham a Holy Communion because they had a relationship. Then Abraham took everything he had, he counted. The tenth of everything he had, he gave it to Melech Sedek. This was before, 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 before Alia, before Moses born. Because Moses is the son of Levi. Levi, son of Jacob. Jacob, son of Isaac. Isaac, son of Abraham. Then Abraham gave tithe. Praise the Lord. So, we read that he gave him a tenth. And Abraham knew, understood the principle of giving tithe. I'm pretty sure that he told this about Isaac. Then Isaac also told this to Jacob. When we read in Genesis 28, 20 Genesis we see Jacob the grandson of Abraham do the same thing Genesis 28 20 then Jacob made the what a vow saying if God will be with me and we watch over me on this journey I'm taking and we give me food to eat and the clothes to wear so that I return safely to my father's household then the Lord will be my God. And this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. Number three. And all of all that you give me, I will do what? I will give you a tenth. You, you understood that this was a common principle, behavior, custom in the ancient time with Abraham. Abraham, now he's grandson Jacob say oh Lord oh Lord if you will be with me everywhere I'll go I will be your possession you will possess me everything I have he said he will be God's possession the Lord will be his number two he will build God's house he said this stone that I have set up as a pillar we be God's house. Number three, he will tithe. Here Jacob said this, Lord, if you give me food, you give me to drink, you give me life, you protect me, I will do three things. My, number one, I will be saved. I will become a Christian. Let me say the term. I will be, you will be my God. I will give you my life. I will be saved. Number two, I will build a church for you. Number three, I will give tithe. That's normal life of any Christian. To be saved, to build a church with other people, then to give tithe. Jacob said,
and cannot be redeemed if you say okay this is bad i give it to god then god refuses to say no i need this when you will give the choice of god even the bad one will become for god you understand that was the principle <laughs> you say okay lord I, I, this is bad okay let me give this bad to god god will say okay bring it then god will refuse say no i deserve the best then he say, oh let me give you this by the principle when you give this good one you need to re to bring back the bad one but god will say no i need both so when you want to give god give him the best praise the lord uh, good if anyone doesn't make a both animal and its substitute become holy and cannot be redeemed these are the commands the lord gave moses at mount sinai from the israelites this means that god continued the principle but now he made he, he made this as a decree it was just a principle but now on top of the principle it's now a decree so the Levite, also the son of Jacob, Levite, those who worked in the house of God, they, they, they were the one to receive the tithes. But what God said to them, Numbers 18, 25, just 25 and 26, the Bible does say, just number 18, 25 to 26, the Lord said to Moses, speak to the Levite, and say to them when you receive from the israelites the tithe i give you as your inheritance you must do what present a tenth of that tithe at the lord's offering even the levites who receive tithe we also tithe when you receive tithe find also tenth of that tithe then give it to God. This is a principle. Praise the Lord. So, uh, in the time of Hezekiah, Hezekiah the king, oh, my time. Hezekiah brought again the worship and asked people to bring, this was the king, to bring tithe. Every time, the, the tithe was an issue to, to people, even Israelite. So, at the time of a good leader he reminded the people to give tithe to pay tithe because it's very difficult for many people to tithe so if you have a good leader he will remind you from david times till to hezekiah now we see people bringing back the tithe and uh, during also the time of malachi let us see the time of malachi you will read this in 2 Chronicles 31, 2, 10, the, the time of, uh, of, of Hezekiah. Time of Hezekiah, you will find the 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles 31, 2 up to 10. You will read. Let us see during Malachi time. So do, during Malachi time, this was a critical moment. Many people of Israel, even the nation of Israel, even many Christians in Israel were not tithing they forgot this god's value this god's principle they didn't pay their times malachi means in hebrew my messenger malach it's angel or messenger malachi the the, the, the word e i means mine my malacha malache malache is is angel or messenger malaika what is you told malaka malaika malaka malachi so malachi means my messenger god send his messenger to remind the son of israel to give tithe god has always raised the prophet to cooperate with the king or ruler to lead israel in his ways remember in the time of isaiah hezekiah brought revival to give tithe it's because of the prophet isaiah you see also jeremiah on the time of josiah the king josiah 
what the king josiah did also he brought reformation in the church it was because the prophet jeremiah reminds people again to tithe so in the time of Haggai and Zechariah, they cooperated with Zerubbabel. So Zerubbabel was a leader, but Haggai and Zechariah were the prophet. So in the time of Malachi, you remember Nehemiah? Nehemiah in the Bible? He came to rebuild the wall. You remember? So at the time of Nehemiah, the prophet Malachi was here to help him. So, the book of Malachi and the book of Nehemiah, so they were contemporary. They were working together. So, Malachi was prophesying and Nehemiah was helping people to listen to the word of God. So, Nehemiah cooperated with Malachi to engage people in prophetic word obeying the prophecy of God you will find in Nehemiah 10 28 29 37 30 people renewing their vow you, you, you will find you will find on um, these verses show how they renewed their vow to give the tens Nehemiah 10, 28, 29, 37, 39. You will find there. And you see, when they, they finished on verse 39, they say, we will not neglect the house of our God. This was their statement at the end. They said, after hearing Malachi and Nehemiah told them, you see how we are in disgrace, how we are dis uh, dis respected with people now this is the time to rebuild the house of god then people vow they say yes from today we will not neglect the house of our god you will find also nehemiah 13 10 14 nehemiah nehemiah 13 10 14 On the verse 14, after Nehemiah convinced people to bring their tithe, and the people vowed, made a covenant to give their tithe, then they, 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 Nehemiah said, verse 14, Remember me, oh, remember me, oh my God, concerning this. Because people now are bringing their tithe in the house of God. Then Nehemiah said, Oh Lord, I, ha I, I just come to achieve a great work. Remember me, oh God, concerning this. And do not wipe out my good deeds. Because he convinced people to give tithe. And I have done for, for, the house of my God and for its services. People brought money, brought tithe. Then the house of God was doing the job. So in Malachi chapter 3, where we, we, we read, the Bible say, If since the time of your ancestors, you have turned away from my decrees, you see, from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, we see after 100,000 years, Moses telling Israel to tithe. Then in the time of, of course, of uh, David, then the time of Hezekiah, then the time of Zerubbabel, and the time of Malachi, they say, every time you forget every time you neglect to give to pay your tithes since that time of your ancestors you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them return to me and verse 8 is very complicated 
very amazing. We a mayor, moral, rab God. You just you are like a pot, and you you are like a, you are like a jar. You are nothing. How you can rob God? Then people they say, God, how did we rob you? He said, Yes, you did. You robbed me. Why? Because you are not giving your tithe. You are not paying your tithe. And you are not giving your offerings. It's very rare in the Bible. The Bible says, Don't test God. Don't put God on trial. But on the case of tithing, the Bible says, Verse 10. 10. Bring the whole tithe in the house that there may be food in my house. Then God say, please test me. It's not good to test God. But for the tithe, he said, I allow you. Test me. Give your tithe regularly. Then you will see. Test me. You will see how I will do what? Open the flood they get. You see, the flood they get, it's uh, you see, when we have water and we, we try to, to block the water to go. Thought, and we remove the fence or, or, or we remove the wall. Then there will be flood of water going. Today, in your heaven, there is something that blocks your blessing. But if you give tithe, God will throw the flood again. Then the blessing will come. You are working so hard, so much, but your earning is little. Why? Because you are not tithing. Just think about that. Pray about that. Then test God. You will see what the God will do for you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord keep you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us stand up and pray. We worship you alone. You are worthy to be praised. We worship you alone. You are more to be praised. Dear Lord, we thank you for this one time, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. As we are going to commit ourselves to tithe, to come back to the old and the holy principle of tithing and gave offerings. Outside, People have, have followed many false teachings preventing them to tithe. But today, Lord, remove the curse under them. Remove this curse on them, Lord. In the name of Jesus, let your power, Lord, of blessing open the flood gates of heaven, Lord. And bring much blessing to them. Touch everyone, Lord. Change their situation. I pray for them. In the name of Jesus.